minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. You ready for do do more in the future? Trap yes. talk podcasts? Yes. Man, only, only trap talk exclusive. Yes. Exclusive. <laughs> oh. So stop calling us. From the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the trap, God love it, love it, and not I'm hot from the hop to the club to spot. Get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up. Trap Talk Reptile Network, coolest reptile network in the world. Welcome to episode 470, Trap Talk with MJ. Thursday nights belong to the trap. What is good, everybody? I'm your boy MJ. Hope everyone's having a great week, man. It's Thursday. It is Thursday. It's on. I'm still pumped up more than ever for these Thursday nights. I hope you guys know that. But especially for tonight, because it's just me and you guys tonight, man. And we got a lot to talk about. Um, and I'm just excited to be here. Another Thursday, like I said. And uh, But listen, if this is your first time hanging out, if you first time clicking on to any of these uh, episodes that I've done, um, hit that like button, man. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Select all. And you'll always be reminded of anything I drop here on this network uh, six days a week this week. Next week, moving forward, everything should be six days a week. TBD, right? Unless something happens, right? Which we're going to get into a lot of my game plan and like the whole reason behind the network and whatnot. But before we get into that and many other topics... We got to get into the normal business of things here on Trap Talk, right? Support U.S. Arc first and foremost. Shout out to Phil Goss. And I do want to say this. Shout out to any pot and shout out to any reptile podcast out there who supports U.S. Arc. It's unfortunate that there are actually a few out there that don't. And we are going to talk about how some of these people don't support U.S. Arc. And I don't know what it is, right? Another topic we'll get to tonight. But please... Go support U.S. Arc. Second link in, in second link in description below. Click on it. Read all about U.S. Arc if you don't know what U.S. Arc is, and just be up to date on things. More importantly, you just never know when things are going to hit your backyard. These legislations are no joke, um, as you've seen already. I mean, the proof is already in happening in states, um, probably in your state. You know, I don't know. Cal I'm in California, but got to do your homework and got to do your due diligence, and just make sure you support U.S. Arc, or at least do the homework on U.S. Arc. All right. I challenge anyone in the comments tonight, by the way, too, because um, I'm going to be very interactive with you guys in the comments. I'm going to get to the early birds, but tonight is definitely going to be, there's going to be a moment where we're, we're going to be going back and forth in the comments. I want to get any questions you guys have for me, anything that you guys want to ask me, it's going to be all open game at the end of this podcast. So, um, but yeah, I don't even know what I was going to get with that. But anyway, support US Arc, please. And shout out to US Arc Florida. I just sent over money. I just got paid today from YouTube. Um, and just sent over the money that you guys raised for that episode with Emilio Villarino and David Levison. Um, so thank you guys. You guys are awesome. Shout out to Elizabeth. Shout out to US Arc Florida. But yes, yeah, so not, not only support US Arc, um, 
U.S. Art Florida as well if you can, especially if you're in Florida, more importantly. Uh, but yeah, shout out to anyone who supports U.S. Art. You guys are amazing. Now, if you're looking for exclusive content, if you want to get to know me better or if you just rather get to know my supporters and their family better, if you want to network yourself with some of the best people doing it in the reptile game, go to the very first link into the description below. Click on it. Join the Trap Talk Patreon family. As soon as you join the Patreon family, you get a link to a Discord that taps you in with over 200 amazing reptile keepers. There's a, a next level Instagram group chat that's cracking 24 seven because we got global trappers. That's right. We got trappers waking up as some of us are going to bed. And then there's some trappers that just don't go to bed until like morning time. You know, you got night shift people respect. I got nothing but grinders in the trap family. So again, my Patreon members, you guys are my heart got big things coming, of course. Uh, but yeah, exclusive content that you could find over at the trap talk Patreon family. Um, and also their awesome, awesome events. So I'm going to be lining up here soon. But yeah, man, appreciate all the love and support. It's it's next level, the kind of support that I have from the Patreon family. And uh, big things popping, for sure. I want to say I'm so thankful. I mean, I, I'm here for a lot of reasons, right? But kind of what keeps me relevant and keeps me able to invest into what I have are all my sponsors, man. Thank you so much to all my sponsors. Since it's me tonight, I'm going to go shout out all my sponsors because I can do that, right? Shout out to Mark Bailey, man. I want to say the guy, the OG, triple OG, this is, this is my... This is not only my mentor, but I look at him as a big brother, and uh, he's just really connected with me and my family. And and I think if you ever have the possibility to come to a Reptile Super Show at all, or maybe one of my trappers, my Patreon members come to Trap Fest, meet Mark Bailey. You meet this guy, I promise you your life will change. And if anyone out there is listening in the comments right now, and you're like, damn, I've met Mark Bailey, and that fool's a G, drop a comment right now. Back me up when I say this. Mark Bailey, Reptiles is the fucking goat. All right? So thank you so much, Mark Bailey, to have your support for going on four years now means everything to me and you've mentored so many people all right i forgot to get a spreadsheet he has a sell sheet from 1997 I, I could probably upload it while i'm talking hopefully but anyways he's just so amazing mark bailey you're the man hey morph market mark bailey reptiles go give him a follow he's sent me some locks and some uh things that he has popping off right now in his projects and you're not going to miss it you know last year he hit that pastel exantic desert ghost clown yeah that's right i shared it so be on top of everything by following Mark Bailey Reptiles on Morph Market. All right, another guy, another person I find I find who's just a up and coming, if not already well known, making a he, he's made his 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 stamp known already. I feel like, especially with the Mandarin gene, uh, is my boy TJ from Tafati Royals of Africa. Um, if you're not already, please, I highly recommend you give him a follow. TJ is very inspirational, and not only just diving in on some of the mo most next level ball python morphs but just the business mindset that he has and if you ever get a chance to talk to tj you know exactly where i'm coming at with that he's just he's just that kind of guy so tj thank you so much for your love and support to fighty royals of africa again on instagram be ready tap in this guy oh my god gary shavino gs reptiles man gary if you're listening love you buddy uh i gotta say this is one of the one of my best friends i, I swear to god i go to this guy for anything um reptile related and even family related he's also somebody i'm lucky enough to he uh knows my wife and you know just real connected with my family anyways gary shavino reptiles on youtube please go subscribe to his channel and just be ready for some awesome content and to learn first and foremost about many different snake species in the hobby there's so much out there guys i'm telling you right now there's so much out there right so don't sleep on it and go learn from some of the best doing it Again, Gary Shavino, GS Reptiles, also Instagram. You can follow him as well, GS Reptiles. Um, and uh, be ready because I know he has some stuff he's going to be posting pretty soon. So if, there, if I have any GS Reptile fans already listening, I'm giving you guys a little heads up. Just keep your eyes open, all right? Gary, Gary Shavino is coming with some heat. Uh, hey, shout out to Brian Susan, Sundown Reptiles, my favorite tree monitor breeder in the game for sure. And then there's Brandon right there. They're like neck and neck. Either way, I look at them the same. Either way. This is my guy right here only because I just am so inspired with <laughs> not only the reptiles he breeds and keeps and his passion, but his travels. Like, I mean, I don't want to get into what kind of person he is, but I also think that's important too. Like if you're going to invest your money into even an animal, it should go to someone I think who's an awesome person. And I want to let you know right now, Brian Susan is one of the best people doing it in the reptile game, not only by his projects, but just him being a human, him being an individual um, and I just know this because I've gotten to become good friends with him over the last couple of years and his passion and, and his knowledge and what he likes to just geek out over is I'm all for it, man. And I feel like his work should never be slept on. Don't ever look sundown reptile, especially if you're in the high end gecko game, because um, he has amazing high end geckos that he's known for. He has amazing abronia, which is just something I'm dreaming about someday. But 
And then more importantly, the tree monitors. This guy right here is killing it in the tree monitor game. There's nobody doing it like Brian Tucson when it comes to tree monitors. He's got all species. Killing it. That's my dog, Brian Tucson. Thank you for your support. Again, Sundown Reptiles. Hit him up. All right. What you see behind me, not only does no reptile podcast in the world have something like this, but what you see behind me is made by Focus Cube Habitats. Three by two by two is the size. The company, Focus Cube Habitats. Go to Instagram. Follow Stephen and Ashley, flexing Texas all day, every day from Focus Cube Habitats. All right, go see their work on IG and first and foremost, go to their website, Focus, Focus Cube Habitats.com. Go check out the, the, the designs that they have going on. Um, over 30 different designs for your reptile needs. Um, and I just, again, I think they're three years running sponsoring the trap. Thank you so much. And I'm looking to do this as a lifetime with them. These are, fam you know, Stephen Ashley is like family to me and cannot wait to look, uh, see them again at the next. Uh, Bill Stiegel party, which is probably uh, happening sometime this year. I know not in April, but sometime this year. Thank you, Stephen Ashley. Uh, shout out to Juggernaut Reptiles, Elijah Armis and his wife, Tiffany. Um, I need to tap in with them and see how their tinling went, but I saw people take pictures of their table next level as I already knew it was going to be. But guys, this is somebody also who's killing it on so many different levels when it comes to working with more than one species of reptiles. Um, and he's a, he's an OG for sure. A lot of people know this guy. And he's one of the first YouTubers that were showing me stuff other than ball pythons that I just couldn't believe. And even his ball python stuff at one point was like, holy shit. And I think he still dabbles here and there. But either way, Elijah Armis, Elijah Armis and his wife, Tiffany, Juggernaut Reptiles. Go check them out on IG um, and shout out to them for supporting the trap. Shout out to Clutch, number one ball python organization app in the game. All right. If you're just coming into ball pythons, man, please. Consider getting clutch and getting organized right off the bat. It's going to help you out. And it's going to make you look good. Think about it as a resume. You know what I mean? You got to set yourself away. You know, high standards, I feel like, right off the bat will take you far in the ball python game. And that's a fact. So shout out to Clutch. Shout out to um, Justin Kabelka and the entire Clutch family. Um, and then I also want to say shout out to Rare Genetic Inc. Um, if you got ball python skin sheds, turn them in with Rare Genetic Inc. Uh, They're doing next level. Uh, stuff for the ball python community and you should really know what your pos hats are at this point come on be realistic we are in a place in this life where we should use whatever technology we have around us and this sponsorship uh shout out is being paused right now because i do want to introduce somebody to you guys this is a special podcast to me because not only am i going to break things down for the network and my ideas here in a bit but i want to introduce somebody to you guys finally whoever hasn't met him already on instagram and my personal friends but before he goes to bed, this is why I have to interrupt because he's on schedule. I need to introduce the future, the real, real future of the trap. Uh, here's my uh, pride and joy. I want you guys to meet Leonardo. Leo, please say hi to all. You got to look straight. Okay, there you go, buddy. All right, Leo. Say hi to all the trappers out there because they all want to see what's in store for the network and what the future holds. So is there anything you'd like to say? before I finish my sponsorship shout outs word. All right, listen, the future guys, this is everything. This is, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of my fire and passion is what's in my arms right now. This is what it's all about. And it's the animals, but I just thought I didn't want to introduce them. Shout out to my wife too. There's my wife, Lily. She's Hi. beautiful, but all right. Love you guys. See you later. And that's Leo. I mean, what are you going to do? So anyways, I love that. That's my boy, man. And I love my wife. But uh, yeah, back to sponsors, man. What a kid. Uh, shout out to Blake Exotic Feeders, number one quail feeder in the game. Organically grown, homegrown. That's that's another thing, man. Like, think about the scariness. A lot of you guys don't understand. Maybe new breeders coming into the game and new keepers, right? They're going through a company purchasing rodents and not sure where the rodents are being bred from or even what the rodents are being fed. I mean, dude, go listen, first and foremost, go listen to the Ron St. Pierre episode I just had last Tuesday. Shout out to all in the tree boys that I have uh, that are a part of that, Bill Stiegel and Marshall Mendes. But Ron St. Pierre broke something down that we're probably going to talk about here in a bit also. But think of the idea of getting something that you know is grown from the person selling it to you, homegrown, organic. And I feel like that's the biggest thing about the quail that you could get from Blake Exotic Feeders. My freezer stays stacked now because of this guy. And my animals love it. I'm telling you right now, don't do yourself a disservice by not implementing a diet for your reptiles that has quell involved. Get quell in the mix. All right? Give me some feedback. 
And also go to BlakeExoticFeeders.com or go to Blake Exotic Feeders on Instagram and just hit him up personally. Say you come, you came from the trap and he'll go ahead and hook you up. He'll hook you up fat if you just go straight to him on, on uh, IG. Say, hey, MJ sent me what's good. We'll take care of you, all right? Thank you, Blake. Appreciate it. Listen, I'm going to tell you guys something. I uh, was going to wait for, I was going to do it on a vlog this week, but of course I failed to do a vlog, whatever. I'm doing a network. I am so ready to convert. 100%, no more paper. I'm getting rid of paper. After seven years, I've been doing paper since I started. And yeah, I had cocoa chip here and there, and it just never worked out. But I'm such a believer of this cocoa chip that is on this. It's 100% on this side of the trap. But everything, ball python-wise, adults, uh, my boa constrictors, my uh, white lips. Well, not my white lips. They're on, they're on their cocoa to go. But they're on paper. And I'm sick of it because... I do paper change every day. You guys know if you have paper, it's it's clean. It is clean. But it's work. It smells like you know damn well there's something going down if anything comes out of a snake when it hits the paper. So, and I have a crazy OCD about smell, the smell in this room, even though I, you know, you can only do so much when it comes to keeping snakes and monitors all together um, in, in a room. But, dude, telling you right now, um, shout out to the chipper. Shout out to the chipper. Please go to cocodoo.com. All right. My preference when it comes to ordering substrate from the chipper is the cocoa to go because same reason why I'm ditching the paper. I don't have time to do paper substrate no more, especially right now with the network and my, you know, my, my family and just everything else going on. I have breeding stuff. I'm excited to talk to you guys about tonight, which is going to be great, but I just, I need to start looking at stuff that saves me time. And what's going to save me time is not having to change paper every day. For sure, 110%, especially the hatchlings. So shout out to the Coco dude over at the chipper. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be switching over 100%. This isn't a promo thing. I'm dead ass serious. His Coco substrate is so choice that it just, it, dude, I don't deal with stuck sheds, you know, and I don't care who you are. If you have ever kept emeralds or chondros, you run into stuck sheds and it sucks. I don't run into them as much. I don't even think I can't remember the last stuck shed I had, to be honest. But it all works through the Coco Dude. Thank you so much, Chris. CocoDude.com again. And use promo code TRAPFAM24. You get 24% off the entire year. Hard. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Hey, shout out to my guy, Mark Hager, over at Texas Condros. He's killing it right now. I mean, listen, I, we all can't get ahead of ourselves uh, when it comes to even shouting, our, sh shouting out our friends in the Condro game. Because... Just never know. But I got to tell you, I have a good feeling about what's happening over at Texas Condros. And I would really suggest you guys heading over to Texas Condros on Instagram. Go check out Mark's current clutch. All reds, no yellows. <laughs> I mean, that's probably why he's killing it. I'm just kidding. I'm Mark, I'm just kidding. But anyways, please go follow. And thank you, Mark Hager over at Texas Condros. Biggest thing I know for sure, there will be some availability from whatever's established from this clutch what i can't tell you not sure but just go tap in texas chondros on instagram i almost started that because it's tx chondros on instagram um and then texaschondros.com all right best way to stay on top and shout out to mark hager and shout out to the guy who helps my snake stay perched in the three by two three three by two by twos that's behind me my uh my man david brahms over at the reptile perch pvc designed this guy's been doing it He's the OG in my eyes when it comes to PVC perches. Uh, also keeps amazing chondros as well. The reptileperch.com is the place to place an order. Or you can go to Reptile Perch on Instagram as well and let David Brown, Brahms know that MJ from the trap sent you. And he'll take care of you as well. He's a really awesome guy. I got to tell you, the chondro community, I mean, beautiful place to be. Because anyone who's killing it in the chondro community is, for the most part, is very nice and just willing to hook you up. All right? So... Thank you, David Brahms. You're the man. Big things popping in the future with me and David Brahms. I'll tell you that much. All right. And somebody I'm excited to talk about right now is somebody who's new. One of my newer sponsors um, just happened to come out of the sky. I'm not going to lie, but I appreciate it because I love the work he has going on with him and his family. He has his two sons uh, that he's riding on with this uh, ball python journey. And shout to Conduit Constructors. Conduit. Conduit Constructors. Hit them up on Instagram. Check them out on Morph Market. I mean, I'm really curious to see what's going on with him and his experience with Tinley. They were just at Tinley. They just bended. And I know when you're new going into Tinley, that could be a beast of a, 
of, of a, I don't want to say challenge, but man, going, being new and bending at Tinley is like, man, it takes balls. But my guy's doing it. And again, can do it. Constrictors on Instagram. Episode coming real, real soon. And uh, shout out to my man, Steven, and his two boys. Uh, appreciate it. And shout out to my very first clothing brand sponsor ever, uh, Monarch Clothing Company. Love the shirts. Love the, the, the shorts. Um, I recommend going over to their website, monarchclothingcompany.com. Use promo code TRAPFAM. Save 15% off your entire order. And let me know how that fits, man. I know I've been telling a lot of you guys to be rocking Monarch Clothing for at least a few months now. And, dude, I rock their clothes every day. So shout out to the entire Monarch Clothing uh, Company family and looking to get more, more, more stuff to rock. 100%. Uh, last but not least, before we get into things tonight, shout out to my guy Rami. Shout out to the number one reptile show in the country. All right? 400 plus vendors. It's cracking. It's such a good time. The LA Pet Fair, June 28th to the 29th. All right? Three different buildings. Holy cow. All my fish people, all my bird people, all my pet people, reptile people, plant people. Dude, we're getting it all. Head over to Reptile Super Show on IG, Instagram. Follow the Reptile Super Show. Get your tickets. Be ready. It's going to be awesome. You can catch me and the Trap family at the Reptile Super Show in June. Best believe it. All right? We have our own little spot now. Thanks, thanks to Rami. Uh, so it's going to go down. And I cannot wait to see so many of you. I got to tell you, the shows are just so awesome. And um, as much as I, you know, I just said how the shows can be or – Tinley could be some. I mean, I could imagine Tinley being scary. And I mean, I wasn't really too scared for Pomona because I've been to a lot of Pomona's. Um, and I just feel like it's more my home, my home turf. Tinley's not my home turf, but even though I know a lot of people at Tinley too. But either way, I really recommend bending or just showing up at, or, at any show. More importantly, the Reptile Super Show. But guys, connections, everything. I don't know. I'll probably say this. If I have this podcast for 20 plus years, which I will, all right, haters, just be ready. Um, I'm always going to say, get your ass to a show, all right? All right, especially if you are keeping awesome reptiles and you are doing good things. It's not doing you anything good just being a hermit or being someone who's shy. You got to let your animals do the talking for you. And um, yeah, just get out to a show. And shout out to anyone out there who commits i mean there's a lot of you guys man who don't miss and that's awesome i love that because you guys know the community you guys know the importance what it brings and it feels good you know i did get fomo as much as i love being home right now like the last march tinley was which was last week i got fomo man i wanted to be there i miss me and dave levison going live right there at the bar and just doing her thing um i miss dave levison i want to hug that guy so many things i miss about going to tinley's so i won't miss october all right um I guess there's a rumor about me not being able to go to any NARBC. Wow. Okay. We'll see about that. Um, but yeah, you'll for sure catch me at October Tinley. That's going down. Um, dude, what do you guys think? Okay. W what's the overall and anyone? Oh, hold on. I'm so sorry. Who's here right now? Who's here right now? Shout out to anyone tapping in right now. If you're, if you're in the chats, like my boy, row 5.0 trap talk, Patreon member. I'm so sorry, man. I want to, I want to make sure I say hi to all you guys tonight because it's just me here tonight, right? There's no distractions, all right? Just me here tonight. So I got to say hi to my people. Trap Talk Patreon member all day every day. My boy, Row 5.0. Soon to be Condro, just everything. Guarantee it. Safe. The homie safe. Trap Talk Patreon member all day every day. My dog right here. Appreciate you. All City Serpents in the building. What's up, James B? What is good? Uh, Trap Talk Patreon member all day every day. Morph Kings in the building. What, what is going on here? It is Oh. There we go. Morph Kings in the building. What is good? Trap Talk Patreon. Remember my boy Shane above all scales with that $20 super chat. And yes, that is right. If you heard it just recently, it is confirmed. Any super chat, not only donated on this episode, but any Trap Talk affiliated segment episode super chats get sent over to US Arc or US Arc Florida. I let the guests decide. The ones who own and run that podcast, I let them decide. But we all decided as a family, as a, as a team, that we are going to send all super chats to us Arc. all right so thank you so much shane for your donation to us arc and it's going to go to a good place appreciate you so much trap talk patreon member all day every day the homie matt b in the building what is good matt b trap talk patreon member all day every day hope that trap production heat is doing well for you uh pj's creation by uh what's up eric how you doing trap talk patreon member all day every day oh my girl Susie, ship your reptiles is finest right here it's my girl Susie. uh Trap Talk Patreon member. She's my, she's my big sis. I appreciate you so much, Susie. 
Uh, we'll catch up soon. Appreciate you being here. Um, Big Mike, 1776 Exotics. Another guy who's probably going to be fully condos here soon, and I love it. Uh, but he's been about it, and his collection's not to be slept on. He has so much Socrates heat, and he's do- definitely has gotten some Dave D heat and a um, bunch of Texas guys like Bill Steve. Like he's uh, wait, maybe not Bill, but I know he's gotten. I don't want to speak for him. But anyways, Mike, appreciate you. Big dog in the building. My OG Trap Talk Patreon member. Uh, JNS Exotics, James Perry in the building. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Man, Freddie, Mr. Google in the building. Trap Talk Patreon member of Unit Family all day, every day. The homie Zach in the building. North W, Herpetological. What's good? The homie Al- uh, Trap Talk Patreon member. Alex M in the building. Shout out to all my V Unit Family, by the way. The homie JD. Cor- Colubrid Corruption, all right? You know, once I get to my podcast topic of things tonight, be ready for that name, Colubrid Corruption. I'm going to be bringing it up tonight. Boy, JD, Trap Talk Patreon, our unit family. My guy, Big E, Top G, Emilio Villarino. I mean, what can I say? Somebody who makes Monday Night New Breed on the Block so relevant as the best new breeder segment to watch in the reptile game, hands down, like, Somebody who's a part of that, my co-host, Villarino Reptiles. And I really recommend you tapping into this guy. If you don't know who Emilio Villarino is, I ain't mad at you. All right. He's kind of a slept, slept on giant in the game. But that's that's just that's about to be over. I can tell you that much. Because he's building an awesome community with a view unit family. Shout out to them. But his projects, his exantic projects, and just so many different stuff that he has going on, not to be slept on. But that guy right there makes New Breed on the Block such a powerful segment. And you cannot sleep on my guy right there. Bill Arena Reptiles, Big E, appreciate you so much. And that's you're looking at part of the future right here of the Trap Talk Network. Uh, we'll be talking about him very shortly. Uh, another guy right here, Albero, Clover Reptiles in the building. What's good? Thanks for tapping in, player. Appreciate you. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Aurora, what's up, homegirl? Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. JQ, the unit family all day, every day. What's up, JQ? Appreciate you tapping in, bro. Hy- hyper Space, um, Hyper on Hating Pied. I'm just kidding. What's up, Chad? The unit family all day, every day. Rep the far eye. What is good? Player Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Piyush. Piyush Patel in the building. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Eric's more factory in the building. What's good? I still have your shirt hung up. Um, hey, real, real shit, man. If I love your shirt that much, it will get hung up in my closet and it will never be dried. Just saying, if I like your shirt that much, and I like his shirt that much. Uh, appreciate you so much. V-Unit family all day every day. Aiden Burke in the building, the young homie AB. Trap Talk Patreon member all day every day. Genetic morphs in the building. What is good? My UK hitter. All right, this guy's an actual American citizen living in the UK. Uh, but he's doing all right. PM Geckos, what's good, player? We got to get you on the show. We got to talk about your experience in the UK right now. Because I got questions. <laughs> now that I got American homie in the UK, you know, I got, a, I, got, I got a lot of UK homies and uh, breeders that I've been friends with through years, but there's some people I have questions about. So we'll talk. We'll talk. PM Geckos, Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Uh, Miller's Menagerie in the building. What is good? M- Miller's Menagerie, Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. I appreciate you so much. Man, there's so many of you. Jim Black. Oh, my God. You want to talk about a heavy hitter? Saturday mornings, all right? All monitor talk with Uncle Mike Stefani and Jim Black. Dude, these two right here are going to be bringing you some powerful – powerful monitor content i really recommend you first and foremost set your reminder for their episode this saturday okay it's gonna go down 9 a.m pacific standard time um first first episode went great but dude who can't who doesn't want to hear monitor talk from from some of the best doing it in the monitor game all right and we all know we need more monitor content out there that's a fact another big you know remember i said that we'll be talking about that very shortly as well jim black in the building jim, jim black in the building thank you so much for tapping in uh michael What's up, Michael? Thanks for tapping in. Appreciate you. It's weird saying my own name sometimes, you know. Um, Lud- uh, Ludicrous Arboreals. Wait, Ludicrous. Lucid, I am so sorry. My guy, this is my Sweden homie. One of my one of my global trappers in the building. Appreciate you so much. Lucid Arboreals in the building. What is good? Uh, let's see. The homie add Dizzle for Shizzle. I got to give it, you know, everyone asks, like, hey, MJ, your logo's so clean. Like, damn, like, oh, I got to forget. Like, hello, like. Uh, you know, like you want to know what makes my podcast just so, I mean, there's a lot of things, right? But my appearance, you know, and it's all because of the homie Adler. Adler's the guy. You got to get tapped in. A lot of you guys need work on your logos. No disrespect. But, and it's, it's kind of a demographic of people who all have the same logo. It's like some weird fucked up animal with all this splat paint on it. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, who's going to remember that? Anyways, tap into Adler. He'll get you right. 
All right. And I appreciate Adler for uh, getting me right. That's a fact. Uh, Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. The homie JP in the building. Canada, where you at? I love Canada. I love JP, man. I'm not gonna lie. He's he's something else. Uh, he's I, I like JP because he's like me. He's like not for everybody. That's that's JP. Um, and that's me as well. So that's why I'm glad you're here, buddy. Thank you so much. What the hell are you talking? I'm not going to Alaska. You are tripping. All right, Josh Fenelinen, one of my OG trappers for sure. Um, appreciate you so much for tapping in. Bradley P in the building. What is good? Gene X101. I hope I said that right. And yeah, good. All right. I said hi to everyone. Fuck yeah. All right. Well, listen, like I said, end of this podcast. If you guys have any questions for me, and if you don't, that's cool too. But this is your time to like, and you know what? I, 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 based on, I don't even care how this goes, to be honest, because I feel like I need to do more of these. You know, you can only bring so many people on as a guest, right? Especially like people who, not that they don't deserve to be on a bunch of podcasts, but man, let's let's think about in primary the ball python topic of things, right? Dude, it's so repetitive. And 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 like Thursday nights is my ball python night. And I and I still will make it my ball python night because ball pythons is what brought everything to fruitation, what's here in front of me and beside me. And 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 I'll always have ball pythons be a part of the Trap Talk Reptile Network at forever. Because I and I love them. I love keeping them. Uh, they're easy. They're super easy. They're fun. I enjoy them. But man, you can only hear about them so much, right? Um, and I feel like not a lot of people are doing enough homework finding out who is on the next level of cutting edge stuff. And they always just get a guest that's either on Trap Talk um, or someone else's. But it always seems like they all go down the line, right? Um, and you know what? I like, you know, <laughs> I know Chris Eaton has, uh, shout out to Chris Eaton, by the way, but Chris Eaton had, um, this thing that he's like, dude, if you're going to come on my show two weeks, don't fucking go on no one's show. And I, I can understand that, but I think just like how I'm going to say it, he, him, I think he could pull this off too. Nobody could interview people like we can, like, you know, we're different or like, you know, and, and I feel like the biggest thing that's missing right now in the entire reptile podcasting scene is like, no one's different. Like everyone's fucking like cookie cutter, like vanilla. The, and that's okay. You know what I mean? But God damn, man, like it's boring. It's straight fucking boring. Um, so, and this is why I want, I thought to myself, like, okay, I get like, and you know what, before I kind of get into things more, it's hard doing a podcast. So I do give people flowers who are at least, who are at least consistent and do things for them. Right. Right. You got some people who are just like, I want to, I want a podcast that's strictly business and I want to learn nothing but the business side of things. And that's how I'm going to outline my podcast to be and that's fucking great do it you know but but like have personality with it like i just feel like some people are scared to put the personality on the fucking camera which i i can get i can understand why but so with all this being said and and i gotta tell you i just i met i mentioned chris eaton it what made me kind of started paying attention because i haven't i'm not gonna lie Dave Levinson hit me up. He told me he said there's over a hundred reptile podcasts now. I don't know how he found out. I don't know how he came up with that number. Knowing Dave, he probably just did some crazy search on YouTube and probably counted over a hundred. Knowing Dave, but over a hundred reptile podcasts. That that right there was like shocked the living shit out of me. I know there was a bunch of podcasts coming out, but not that many. I mean, the reptile world's not that big. It's big, but not that big. But obviously, it's like whoa. And I want to say probably ninety percent of those podcasts are ball python podcasts, right? Um, I mean, you have a little bit of the gecko side of things, and then obviously more of like more of the diverse species of reptiles, which is great. But dude, there's a lot of it saturated right now. Which go figure, right? Um, and that makes sense because ball python is the biggest market for the reptile game, even right now. Even even at a place where we're at, dude, there's still people making. 20, 30, 40 K sales. If you have the right ball pythons, you're still making hell of money. And that's a fact. So that being said, I know there's people out there working with some of the best species, even with ball pythons who could present some amazing content if they had their own podcast. Like I, and that's always been like, I'm even having people on, I'm like, damn, these fools would kill it. If they had their own show. Cause one thing I see with a majority of my guests, especially Thursday nights is I see passion, man. Like I see, I see when they talk, like they could just go on and on and on. And that's kind of like what kind of what the hobby needs is someone who's really passionate, doing it by the animals, for the animals, but is willing to pour their heart out for you and tell you 
how to do it right. Um, because you know, with all due respect, there's a lot of these people doing podcasts that they ain't got they ain't got much experience under their belt, other than maybe breeding one species, which is fine. But at the end of the day, there's so much out there. Like there's a lot, like there's a lot of meat on the bone of different types of reptiles to be spoken about. Um, and shit, even seven nights, you know, like the, the my my so let me slow down. You guys know I have my Monday night new breed on the block, right? My, my plan right now is where I'm going to tell you exactly what every day of the week you have to look forward to as far as episodes from the Trap Talk Reptile Network and why it's a network, right? Because it's started as podcast, but, you know, obviously just myself, I started doing more than one show, all right? But once you get other people involved and once we're talking about other species of reptiles and next, you know, we're talking three hour episodes of something that's not ball python related, Dude, whole nother story, right? But it's all reptile related at the end of the day. And this channel is a reptile related channel. It's all about the reptiles, period. That's it. It's all about the animals on this on this channel. So turning this thing into a network and finding the best of the best to bring to this channel was like the ultimate goal for me. And I had this idea well over a year ago. Because um, you got to understand, like I have my ways of doing things. Um, also, like a commitment like this is not... Dude, I can't expect people to like, you know, even though they love talking about it, like to commit to something like this is a big deal, I feel like. Um, so that's another reason why I'm rolling stuff out very smooth and slow. Like I haven't just, you know, full gassed it. I'm actually basically in a sense, Mark Bailey said, I'm throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. <laughs> but things are sticking. I got to tell you, and I'm going to tell you what's sticking right now. But anyways, I'm going to break down all the episodes. I'm going to tell you what you have to look forward to. And I'm going to kind of give you some background information on the guests, the people who are going to be speaking because they're all they're all amazing people, all right? No blemishes. I mean, as far as working with reptiles, no neglect <laughs> first and foremost. So I'm very proud of the people part of the Trap Talk Reptile Network. Emilio Villarino, as I said, right? He is my guy for a new breeder on the block. Um me and him ride that show out. It's amazing because it's all about finding the new up and coming um and even the people who are just excited to be here in their first year, right? Um, some people move, move quicker than others, right? And it's also a good way to find out who's full of shit and who's not because, you know, some people like to talk a big game. You get them on a show and all of a sudden they forget a bunch of stuff. But either way, that's how you find things out. And I think it's fun sometimes. But either way, it's awesome. Like if I could go back and think some of the very first new breed on the block guests I've had on, right? Like Antoine, no, Antoine Hood was never a new breeder, I, I don't think. All right, but Civil Serpents, shout out to Jacob, who just started a podcast with Andrew Redwood, uh, two hemipedes in a pod. I think that's what it's called. I hope I said that right. But I hope I think they have a show tonight too. I recommend you checking them out. Real cool, real too. I, okay, if you want not to get off topic, but if you want to talk about making a ball python podcast, um, but just kind of being somebody who's naturally funny, that's I mean that okay, and, that, and that's why I feel like Chris Eaton will always be able to pull a show off because he's himself and he's fucking funny, right? But these two guys are fucking funny too. Um, and 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 I feel like at least if you're gonna do something, do something where it has people to, you know, make it fun, I guess. These I think these guys are gonna make it real fun. So check them out either way. But Jacob, you know, and Andrew, Andrew's been a new breeder on the block, you know. I've had so many guys who are just now doing their own thing who've been a part of like the new breeder segment, and it just you know, I you know, I can't you know, I always, if it was up to me, every new breed on the block I have on has success, right? I don't know what the success ratio is. I don't think I have anyone who's really fallen off the wagon. Maybe a couple. I would have to really do some like, and maybe that's something me and Emilio could kind of maybe do some, some, some searching on. And, you know, I don't want to like announce the ones who are like gone because I think it's like, why like, why even like, make praise of somebody who's no longer in the hobby. If they're not in the hobby, they're not in the hobby no more. You know what I'm saying? Unless, unless they did something really messed up, you know, and it needs, but even then too, right? But either way, Monday night, new breeder on the block uh, with Emilio Villarino. One of the episodes I love, I love the most. And, you know, I'm gonna probably say that about all of the ones that I'm a, I'm a part of because of the guest or the co-host that's a part of it. But I'll tell you right now, man, if you're in the ball Python game and you're just now listening to Trap Talk, this is the first episode, you do not miss out on Monday nights. OK, because we really tap into everything when it comes to knowing ins and outs of, you know, mainly ball pythons. I want to say that's the meat potatoes. Like, let's be real. I hate saying it, but it is what it is. Right. Um, but Emilio, like I said, having someone so relevant like Emilio Villarino really makes Monday nights what it is. Um, and then having my spin on things as well. So be ready for that Monday night new breed on the block. All right. And Tuesdays, 
which has been fucking real popular lately. Um, and you know, got to dedicate everything what's behind me and stuff that lives in the trees. They, they need their own episode. I always knew that from the get go. Um, Tuesday, Tuesday nights started off fat snake Tuesdays that got ditched. <laughs> um, and then we did tree monitors, right? It was tree monitor Tuesdays. Right. But then I was like, man, what about other reptiles in the trees? I think that's, I think everything in the tree should be discussed. Right. So that's when I came up with the idea all up in the, or excuse me, all in the tree Tuesdays. All right. And my co-host, man, co-host Bill Stiegel from Phoenix Reptiles, the mayor of Conjo Town and Marshall Mendez, who I want to give kudos to, um, you know, cause he had an, you know, he had, he had some history finally, you know, he's had some success, uh, finally getting a, a, a an albino green tree python to hatch now hasn't eaten yet or anything i know there's kind of getting ahead of ourselves but i do want to say props to marshall mendez i'm just proud of him uh somebody who's been a herper and a longtime keeper since the 90s and uh and then again mark you know bill stiegel these two amazing guys who just bring so much to the all in the tree uh tuesday episodes and we've already brought on some amazing people we're just getting the ball rolling my list as far as who's going to be coming on tuesday nights is just dude it's stacked all right and what's awesome is my man, Bill Stiegel, is building a, a list as well. Marshall Menes is just hanging out, and he, I don't ask him to do much. <laughs> Anyways, all in the tree Tuesdays. I'm so excited. Every Tuesday, I'm like ready to rock and roll. And I do recommend you checking out last uh, Tuesday's episode with Ron St. Pierre out of Florida because he dropped some heavy heat, man. Um, and it's it's making the stir right now. I don't know if anyone's a part of the Amazon Basin or Amazon uh, Basin Emerald Tree Boa group on Facebook, but shout out to Chris Rice, Coach Rice. He's definitely letting it, letting some stuff be known because he's not holding back. But the whole regurgitation thing. Um, anyone who works with Emerald, anyone who works with Emerald Tree Boas knows regurgitation and Emerald Tree Boa is like it's a death sentence. There's no like for a lot of reasons, right? A lot of people with experience say this. Chris is one of them. I want to say I'm one of them, but also I don't want to ignore the fact that and for anyone out there is like, what is MJ talking about? Well, here, Emerald Tree Boas, right? Um, when you get them wild caught, they're pretty prone to regurgitating. Um, not all of them. You get lucky, right? But <laughs> I want to say it's 50-50 for sure. Um, I just had a friend recently who sent me a picture and he was all excited. And I'm like, bro, feed that thing a good meal. And then... Let me know, like, if it's okay, right? That's usually the go-to. But what Ron had to say is Ron said he has about 30 emeralds, okay? Out of the 30-ish emeralds that he has, 18 of them puked. And he was – and I, I'm talking about they puked, like, probably back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back to back to back times. Um, and then he was trying to experiment and finding out what the problem was, and he ended up feeding rodents to all 18 of these emeralds to rats that were just being fed fruit and nuts, no, no grain. So then after three regurgitations, of all 18 of these emeralds, he feeds these emeralds rats for the fourth time after rats that, that have no grain in them. And I guess, according to him, watch the episode, none of them regurgitated. And uh, that's just, that's unheard of. That's really unheard of. Now, it's not something that to say, like, I'm gonna, I'm not going to say the guy's crazy. I mean, I think, like, holy shit, can he be onto something? But then also, the numbers is just kind of wild to me. Like, that's 18 regurges back to back to back three times, and then the fourth one, no regurge. And then what he even said he did, he said, just to, just to confirm it, he fed the next time a normal rat with grain in it, and it puked. So I'm like, holy shit, why would you, you know, in my head, I was like, why would you want to go there? But then he just wanted to try it. You know, Ron St. Pierre has 40 years experience in the reptile game. You ain't going to tell this man shit. And if he wants to try something, he's going to try something. So I learned a lot on that episode. That's why I think that episode is very important. And I go check it out. But he then said the next go, he kept some rats, held them back, emptied them out, and just made sure they were on nuts and fruit. And now he's, can. I don't know, I don't know what meal he's on, but now he's saying he's on a path of success of, these 18 emerald tree boas not regurging anymore because they're eating rats with only fruit and nuts in their system. No grain. If that, okay. Now, if that turns out to be a legit, like, 
like factual thing that could dude that not only would that save so many emeralds from going to the freezer or just even ex like dude i don't know if anyone's experienced regurgitation it's not fun it's terrible it is the one of the most smelling most horrific things i dream about it sometimes it's terrible it's bad all right um and like that's also another thing too like it's i hate having to be not negative okay i don't want to say i hate because sometimes i like being negative but i don't like telling somebody dude you're gonna more likely either have a snake puking or it's gonna be fed i rather it just i'd rather have a solution where we don't deal with regurgitations anymore because they suck they're disgusting they stay it's not fun so if ron saint pierre is on to that and that that could be freaking game changing so again i would not want to uh miss out on that episode if i was you go back and check it out and that's for any all in the tree tuesday episodes okay um big things coming all right and that's because when i say that because you understand how many people I talk to. And when I say people, I'm talking about people who are doing really well in the ball Python game and already building a following and they're doing they they want other stuff. They want cream, they want green tree pythons, they want emerald tree boas, they want tree monitors, basically stuff I've been obsessing over. So, dude, things are about to be popping here real soon. Okay. Now, mind you, it's not for everyone, but that's that's just the way she goes. But that being said, Tuesdays are going to be getting more popping and popping. So just Tuesday nights, if you're if you're if you're somebody out there who's just wondering what it's like to get into the Green Tree Python game or who to learn from, who not to learn from, or whatever, that's it. Tuesday nights is your night. So tap in all in the tree Tuesdays. All right. And again, shout out to my boys, Marshall Mendez, Red Mountain Herps, and Phoenix Reptiles, the mayor of Condro Town, Bill Stegel, my guy. All right. Wednesday. Woof. All right. Now check it out. Another big reason why I wanted to start the Trap Talk Reptile Network. I am so tired of doing podcasts. <laughs> oh man, I'm not okay. Like I'm not tired of, but I'm just like, dude. I do, come on, guys. I do a lot. Let's be real. I've been doing three shows consistently for going on four years now. All right, that's not even counting the travel, the 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 traveling I've done, the unfiltered reptile podcast episodes I've done. Been doing a lot. And I'm just kind of tired of it. Like I'm, I'm tired. I just do. I'm tired of doing so much of it. All right. Um, so I, I want to, like I said, if it was up to me, I, I, I would be a part of every single episode, but I don't, I know that's just a burnout for sure. Cause if I already feel like this, I'm going to burn out. Right. But it's not all about me. And this is why like the trap is MJ's right. But it's the trap represents the reptiles and the best people doing it by the reptiles. And I, I, one of the biggest influences of me wanting to pick certain individuals for certain episodes was this guy I'm about to talk about right now. The one who's in, he owns Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights belong to Stephen Cush and Cush's corner. All right. Stephen Cush started this whole podcasting journey with me when he was 17 years old at Cold Blood Cafe with Forrest. He didn't talk much. I don't think he talked the first three episodes. He just sat there, but he was there, you know, and now he's still here. Grown boy. I don't even want to say boy, grown ass man, killing it, you know. Um, and he is just so fired up. He's so inspired. He, you know, he's he took two years off from not doing any kind of podcasting, uh, which you know I love having Stephen just come in and drop in some heat because Stephen, dude, you want to talk about passion, bro. you know, you want to talk about passion and just like drive. This kid right here has it. Um, and I think I think I always still call you a kid, Stephen. Uh, just because you're you're like my little bro. So, but anyways, Cush's Corner happening Wednesdays right here, six o'clock Pacific Standard Time, and that's all Stephen Cush and his idea for what he thinks is important for the Cush's Corner podcast. I will tell you right now, it's going to be very Scrub Python heavy, very Indonesia reptile, uh, Australian reptile heavy. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's bringing some amazing guests on already. All right, he just had episode four. Episode five is coming up next week with rob christensen rob i'm a little butthurt buddy <laughs> only because dude shout out to rob though man I've, I've always been a rob fan uh, even though i had my beef with nerd back in the day always like rob and i've always said that but because of my probably my stupidity and beefing with nerd um especially at that time i asked rob to come on the show two two three years ago and he politely declined um i haven't asked him since and i think he would now but anyway Stephen beat me to the punch so Rob Christensen uh, from Nerd. We used to be from Nerd, all right? You know him as uh, Jeremy uh, Turgon's good friend and whatnot. 
but be ready for that episode. It's going down right here on Trap Talk Reptile Network next Wednesday. Cush's Corner. And Steven, I'm proud of you, buddy. It's going to be big. I'm telling you right now, lots of stuff to learn. He has a way of putting out stuff where it hits, it smacks. All right. And Steven Cush has been in this solely, like his life has been about reptiles for like years, eight years old or something like that. All right. And he wrote it down in a school book that he's always going to be a full time reptile keeper. I think he was 11 or 12. He'll tell you the story. Anyways, Wednesday nights, Cush's Corner. Then Thursday nights, right here. Dude, you guys know Thursday nights belong to the trap, trap talk with MJ. So when I started, this podcast, before it was even Trap Talk Reptile Podcast, it was just called, uh, it will actually it was called the Snake Trap Sessions, and then it went Trap Talk with MJ. So Thursday nights are going to always be Trap Talk with MJ. It's going to be my show where I'll either do a solo podcast like what I'm doing right now, or I'll have a guest. You know, I like having guests. I feel I just love. I don't think personally, if I get to talk to him, it's not going to be guests will never be burnt out on this show ever because there's always something new to talk about. Um, something just clicks in my head too. Whenever I get somebody back on the show, man, I just have doors that open up that didn't open up on the very first show. So it's never ending. First and foremost, Thursday nights could just always be a guest, but I feel like there's just some Thursday nights. I want to be personal with you guys. Like, you know, especially if you guys have like questions at the end of this episode, you know, I feel like I'm very, like I, some of you guys talk shit because if you want to ask a question and you want my attention, you have to drop a super chat. Yeah. Kind of my kind of is the case when I have a guest on because if you're going to take my attention off the guest and what we're talking about you better have something super like either you paid for it or if it's a trapper or somebody I know like I'm sorry but that's just how I run the comments normally now anything like that tonight all right I'm just here tonight so it's just me so I do want to owe you guys that you know at least when I can do an episode where we chop it up you know a little little back and forth with the chats and I appreciate anyone who's tapping in right now. Thank you guys. I mean, I, I didn't know it was going to be 63 people tapping in for me, just me yapping, but we haven't even gotten to so much more that we're about, about to talk about too. Uh, so you guys are ready. Hit the like button, get the likes up. Let's get the likes up right now. Appreciate you guys. But um, yeah, Thursday nights, man, I, that, that's, that will always be the main night for the network trap talk for me Thursday nights. I can tell you, I'll never miss a Thursday night as long as I'm healthy. I'm here, but yeah, trap talk with MJ be ready. All right. Because that's bringing everything Thursday nights. Um, then Friday, man, who doesn't want to get their who doesn't want to get their their weekend started off correctly with Colubrids? That's right. Thank God it's Colubrid podcast happening Friday here, Trap Talk Reptile Network. All right, I have a bi-weekly switch off as far as hosts for this segment. All right, you guys already seen my man Junior JMG Reptiles. All right, please go give him a follow. But Junior is the hog nose king. He's the holy hog nose. Like this guy right here is putting so much effort and so much love and, and just spreading the word of hog nose out there to the community. And no one's doing it like Junior, first and foremost. And the way this guy could just pull in, pull in an audience rambling about something that is just next level. I mean, Junior's the man. Um, you know, so you're going to be able to catch Junior here this Friday and then bi weekly every other Friday uh, for, thank God it's Colubrid Fridays. Um, and then on the other weekends are my, my, my two young up and coming hitters, uh, my boy Alvaro from Clover Reptiles, uh, scale success rep podcast. I'm so sorry, Alvaro. I should remember that. But anyways, Alvaro from Clover Reptiles. And then my young homie, young JD from Colubrid Corruption. All right. So please go follow those two guys on YouTube. All right. Go subscribe. But these two guys are going to be some amazing heat, a little different. All right. These guys are going to be something a little bit different. Because that, that's their plan, all right? But it's going to be something you don't want to miss, all right? But Joe De DeStefano and Alvaro is coming to the Thank God It's Colubrid segment Fridays, all right? So you'll be able to catch them here on their very first episode next Saturday. So be – I'm sorry, next Friday. I just got thrown off because the Delilah just tried opening up my door, and I don't know. I hope she's okay. It's my dog. Anyways, appreciate those two, and I appreciate uh, JMG, my boy – Jeff Jr. and the Colubra game. Okay, there's just so much with Colubrids too. Can we like really think about Colubrids as a whole and how much there is to speak on Colubrids? How many Colubrids are just slept on that need to be kept in the game that are just a lot easier to keep than you think, right? Now, it just depends what you want to keep with Colubrids. There's levels just like anything. Like if you want to, if you want a, a hardcore Colubrid, you could get a hardcore Colubrid, but there's also manageable and really fun 
working colubrids that you could get your hands on. So I feel like Joe and and Alvaro is going to have a have a great asset to this segment um, and also just bring some other community type conversations to the table. You know, we're looking to be doing some U.S. art stuff on Fridays um, as well. You know, like reptile community gatherings, which Joe and Alvaro will be a part of and Jeff, all of us, you know, like I feel like at some point, too, we all need to get together as a reptile community, talk about certain things. Um, and, you know, yeah, just be ready. Friday, Friday nights are going to get your weekend started. I'll tell you that. All right. And that's going to be going down here uh, every Friday, five o'clock Pacific Standard Time right here. Trap Talk Reptile Network. All right. Big things popping. And then I already kind of gave you guys the, the, the hint earlier Saturday. Mike, excuse me, Uncle Mike Stefani from Mike Monitors, all right, and his co-host, Jen Black, all monitor talk. That's right. They're going to be covering the biggest meat and potatoes of keeping big monitors, dieting, supplementation. Like, we're talking, like, how to keep them outdoors, indoors, whatever. So much going to be coming to the table for monitor talk and two amazing people that are going to be throwing it down for you guys bi-weekly Saturday mornings, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, okay? Um, going down this Saturday, they have Brian Waterloo from Waterloo Lace. Go give him a follow on IG, but that's going to be an amazing episode. Brian Waterloo is one of my favorite um, and my mentor guy in the lace game. Um, he's a good friend of mine as well, and I'm looking forward to, definitely looking forward to what he has to say about Monitor Fest going down in May. So shout out to uh, anyone out there who's planning on going to Monitor Fest. I know for sure I'm going next year. Uh, I know about that time is around my time for my second surgery. So, yeah, Waterloo Lace coming to the all monitor talk segment with Uncle Mike Stefani and Jim Black Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You're not going to want to miss that. And then on the other weeks, we're going to be covering tree monitors. Um, Cody, the homie Cody, uh, and who I had on this show quite a bit, uh, he's going to be bringing on some some really cool guests. But I feel like Cody's like – He's the youth, I feel like, in the tree monitor uh, community. He's doing things that a lot of people aren't doing as far as uh, socialization goes. Like, so one thing Cody's already known for is having some of the most docile green tree monitors in the game. Um, and I've heard so much feedback from his customers and just people coming to me. So, and Cody's just tapped into a lot of things, man. I, I feel like a lot of people don't understand how sick of a freaking reptile keeper Cody is and, and what he has. Uh, just under his belt as far as knowledge and you know he makes awesome you know really cool uh design purchases and whatnot so he's just he's just a young up-and-comer for sure who's gonna be a part of this reptile game for a long time and i couldn't find anyone else better as far as uh future like a young future up-and-coming tree monitor guy to be a part of my tree monitor segments uh for, for uh the bi-weekly on saturdays all right now i can't here's the thing i'm super excited to talk about the network and everything i can't give you sunday nights yet as far as like, no, I'm telling you, as far as my confirm, like what's happening Sundays. Okay. I just can't yet. Yeah, I can't. I want to, but there are just some loose ends right now. And if I say, I just don't want to jinx myself first and foremost. Right. So I got to make sure these loose ends are tied in a knot. And then I'll tell you what's happening Sunday. But right now you have six weeks, you have six days. So relax. All right. I'm giving you six days right now. Give me a little time on Sunday because I want to come correct. And like Mark Bailey said, I'm just throwing spaghetti at a wall, trying to see what sticks. And yeah, that's too. I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, that's that's in my eyes from what I've started and what I feel like what I want to do. It has to be about other people. It just can't be about me. And also it gives me a time to break off and do things to concentrate on my animals. Because as much as I love this podcast and I do because it's it's a career of mine. I mean, the reason why I broke and shout out every single sponsor tonight is because that's a lot of sponsors first and foremost, but dude, that's, that all feeds me and my family. Like this is, this is a job, you know what I mean? But this is a job I don't look at as a job. It's my passion. Like I love it. But what comes before even the podcast is the animals like breeding, like, and being successful with animals. And I'm not just talking about pythons. Cause God dang that, that was a notch in the belt, like right off the bat, thankful for it. Right. But I got challenging things ahead of me. You know, I work with over 15 species of reptiles. Like my boy Emilio says, be realistic with yourselves, okay? Name another podcast out there where the host keeps what I keep. Sorry, no disrespect. You're not on that level at all, period, all right? But that 
I, I just, I got so much concentration that I need to give a lot of these animals because I'm at that point where these animals are all old enough to breed. And one of the things that I, that keeps haunting me, and I don't want to say it's haunting me, but I've gotten this advice from many guys out there and they say, you know, it's cool to work with many different species, but it's hard to focus down and worry about just one species because your, your mind spread everywhere. Right. And even people in just the ball Python game, right. Who are just dialed in only work with ball pythons. Cause I mean, are, are dialed in so much cause they only work with ball pythons. So there is a level of being like next level with what you're working at. If you're just working with one thing, that's why I do understand there's some people who don't want to spread their concentration on, on anything else besides their, with what, what they're working with, because that's, what's more important, you know? Um, <laughs> and here comes Delilah. But that being said, I got to tell you that I don't even know where I was going. Delilah, were you supposed, can you get out, please? Give me one second. My dog's here. Is it seven yet? Oh my God. Hold on. I got to Alexa, turn off all the lights. Okay. Boom. Anyways, uh, what was I talking about? This happens every episode. Um, oh shit. Oh yes. Ha <laughs> ha. Damn it. And that dude, that got scary because I don't have a guest on the other line to tell me where we were at, but I just remembered, I just want to focus on getting the reptiles down even more. Right. Cause the ball pythons, I'm, I mean, I have, I'm at that point with my ball Python game too. I'm looking forward to it. Like I'm about to hit some really cool looking stuff, hopefully. Right. And it's looking promising. So my mind is definitely on the ball pythons. Right. But I have stuff, like I said, that I dream about. Right. Um, some of it's going in my favor. I, I want to say maybe all of it, as far as what I want to do with these species is looking pretty good this year. Can't get ahead of myself. Right. But if I want to grow this channel, if I want to take the trap to the next level, um, I can't do it alone. And that's just what it comes down to. I don't want to do it alone. I got support. I got some of the best people in the reptile game that want to be a part of this. And I also think that's important because um, I've said this from the very beginning. I think a lot of people ask, like, I mean, I haven't gotten this question in a long time, but like how I came up in the game, like, because I've, you know, I've only been doing this for five years, right? Um, and I got a lot going on for somebody who's doing full-time reptiles for, for as long as I've been doing it. But really, I just connected myself with the right people. Like that saying will never be old to me. You know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Because who you know is what you know. Like that's how that works, right? But man, the people that you can meet in this game will change your life. And I'm like a living proof of that. Like I've had people who I who I've gotten amazing life advice from amazing help from and it changed my life so but now i want to be able to do that to other for other people you know like i want to be able to have success with the reptiles and be able to give information that worked for me to other people to make other people successful with all the stuff the reason why i love bill stiegel marshall mendez um socrates just people who are doing so well in condros who are willing to speak. I give, dude, I love people like that because without them, what, what the fuck would we do? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I want to be that someday. Like I know I've done a lot with the podcasting side of things, but like, I think the reptiles is where my true, true, like lifetime goals and my passion, what I want to be known for lies with the reptiles. And I really can't do that. Um, and keep doing and do podcasts every day and, and whatnot. Right. So, this is just a good way for me to bring other people who I really love and respect and admire in the reptile game to come say what they need to say, build their own audience, you know, and, and capitalize off the trap audience that's already here and just kind of put them on, you know, it's all about other people and putting other people on, I feel like. And, and if you're that guy to have a basketball court, excuse me, if you're that guy to have a basketball court and not put your own teammates on that court, what kind of person are you? You know what I mean? Like I want people on this court on of people who believed in me and people that I believe in and whatnot. Right. So I just think it's a big way for everybody to grow at the same time. And I also like, if you're, if you're out there and you're in the reptile game and you think that your passion and you have something that is super important to bring to the reptile community, reach out to me, hit me up. I would love to see what you have going on. Um, because I'm not shying away from anyone who's doing things right. This is literally, this is just a way to kind of just 
with all the circus and clown business shit that you see on other podcasts, this is the way to kind of just get people who want to take this, you know, serious, but not too serious, right? Because we have fun here. Like, let's be honest. Trap Talk Reptile Podcast slash network is all about having fun um, while we're doing it, while we're learning, while we're learning stuff to change your life. That's what it's all about. So, yeah, can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and, you know, I don't know, like, there were some things I wanted to address tonight. And uh, just because, like I said, when uh, when I found out, what did I find out? Well, I found out Chris Eaton did an episode about me. He did a he did an episode, and uh, he was like he went off, like he went he went off on me, and uh, you know because he was calling me like fake and shit like that, and, and and you know I heard I I heard it, and so, and then it led me to another podcast, and I was like, dude, how many people are talking about me? You know, and I didn't, I didn't even know about it. like nobody like notified me or anything, you know, but. I want to address some of those things, but I also, I don't like, it is what it is. Like me addressing that does me no service whatsoever because at the end of the day, nobody's doing what I'm doing. Like there's not one fucking person out there remotely doing anything close with the trap talk, what the trap talk reptile network is doing. I, I hate to say it to sound cocky, but it is what it is. Like, I don't, the fuck you want me to do about it. All right. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. So, for me to even give two fucks about any what how anyone thinks about me period who has no relevancy to the reptile game in my eyes or to what i have going on why should i care and also like i'm saying i'm so fucking spread thin right now like i'm I, i'm trying to do the network i got the i have no time to give a fuck about somebody and how they think about what i'm doing and what i and, and the network you know what i'm saying and what's crazy is you hear people all of a sudden saying that they had an idea for a network No dig at anybody either. I'm just saying, I'm gonna just keep my shit professional as I do, um, because the people, the reptiles, and the amazing people, the right people in the in the reptile game, and the and, and the reptiles is what it's all about, and that's what's gonna make trap be the trap, because you know there are so many different reasons of being a part of a hobby, right? And a hobby is a hobby. I call it an industry. Only because it's a career for me, first and foremost. I've made, I made a lot. I don't want to say it depends what a lot of money is to you, right? But to, in my eyes, I made so much money already so far in the reptile industry. I'm very thankful. Like I've changed my whole entire life around. Um, but I don't know what's going to go with that. My mind just went sideways again. I guess I'm already at that point. <laughs> but I just like there's just so much good in the reptile game. Like I just love it. Like even. And what I mean by that is like, even if you're in a position where people want to cancel you or you're just getting hate from left field and like, you just don't like, there's so much other things to look at, to be happy about. Right. And that's kind of where it was so easy for me to start flipping the script. Um, Cause I already mentioned earlier, you know, like I don't have, first and foremost, I wish everyone the best. I really do. All right. Do I feel like everyone's going to be successful in the, in the podcasting game? No, not at all. Uh, because there's some people who are doing it like without the passion and they almost don't like almost doesn't even seem like they like to do it. They're just doing it. Right. So, but then the ones who are really doing it to do it, like, fuck dude. I mean, they know it's not easy, but stick it out and that shit will go. But there's just not much passion in the reptile podcasting game right now. It's really not. I mean, there's that it's out there. Trust me. Like I said, Joe, De Joe, JD, young JD, Alvaro. Um, like it's out there. You know what I'm saying? But I just, I try and listen, you gotta understand what puts food on my plate. What's put what puts food on my kids' plate, my wife's plate. I take real serious. Like I, and and I, I try not to take it too serious. But fuck, dude, like I really love these animals. And if someone's here to dick off and fucking just not have anything related to reptiles, but just be here and have a have a huge opinion on people who are keeping reptiles. I mean, that's fine, dude. Like there's a place for everything, right? I just want things to be about the reptiles. Like I just want, I just want to continue to learn about reptiles. I want to talk to someone who is working with reptiles, who's relevant with reptiles and continue to inspire people who are not only coming into the game, but people who are already in the game. You know what I'm saying? And I hate, I, I again, I'm not saying this to fucking flex, but maybe I am, but dude, this podcast attracts people who want to be successful. That's what this fucking goddamn network's all about is trying to attract people who want to get the fuck out of the life situation that they're in. There's people out there who wake up so fucking miserable 
they wake up. It's sad to think because I was one of those people, but there are people out there who wake up who, who probably have beautiful kids. They have a beautiful wife or whatever, maybe not a beautiful wife or whatever they have. They have a family, but they have to go to a workplace where they fucking hate their life. How many people could put up with that for so long? I know I couldn't. Once I started not like once I got out of sales and started managing, that's when I was like ready to blow my fucking brains out. I can't work for anyone but myself. And guess who hired me for this position in the reptile industry? Me. Nobody gave me this job in this fucking podcasting game but me. I hired myself. That's another big fucking advantage about being in the reptile game. You could make a position for yourself in this game. Nobody needs to hire you. You could fucking do it yourself. But anyways, there's just people out there I know that want to escape that life. I talk to them. Um, I don't ever get to really dive deep on my mental health personally with you guys a lot but personally i've been dealing with a lot like i mean my wife i love you i just want to say lily i love you so much i um she deals with a lot dude i mean i'm sure mark medic shout to shout to mark medic but he kind of called me out he's like hey uh, how's dilly how's lily dealing with you and uh dude she's i put her through a lot man um but we always you know one thing about Lily is like, I know how to listen to her. I'm not a good listener, but like when I know things need to be corrected, I we have that communication. And I'm so lucky where I have a wife who deals with me to the point where, okay, as long as we communicate, we can get through this, right? But she, I put her through a lot because um, she knows what I go through in this room. I'm in this room maybe too much. I put my whole fucking, everything I got in me goes into this room. And maybe it's, you know, there's a saying out there, um, a strength overdone becomes a weakness. And sometimes I'm, I catch myself in this room where I don't need to be in this room anymore. But if I think about podcasting stuff, because, you know, understand that my desk, my computer, everything's in my reptile room. So everything I do for the podcast, for the vlog, everything's in the reptile room. So I'll be on the computer for like three hours ready to go inside. And then I'm like, holy shit, I got to do this whole rack. I forgot about this rack. So that's kind of like the way this room easily sucks me in. All right. And I hate doing stuff the next day. Like I don't, cause I already know there's other stuff to do the next day. If anyone can feel me out there. Right. So I'm somebody where if I see it, I get it done, especially if it's supposed to get done that day, it just needs to get done. But either way, like what is the point of doing anything? If you don't have time for your family, you're not investing time with your family, especially if it's a newborn, right? Like I don't want to put everything on Lily. And I feel like I have a little bit in, in some, you know, obviously I watch Leo. I watch my son a lot. But she does that. She does a lot. Like she's she's super mom, you know. And I'm not trying to be like the '60s where the freaking wife does everything. Like I want to contribute. I want to do my part, you know. And the only way I could do that is if I lighten my load in here somehow, right? And, and another thing, I don't know how many. I don't know how many guys already know out there, but I'm getting rid of a lot of my big stuff. Like I've already kind of said what is leaving super dwarf for tick wise. But my scrub pythons are going to be leaving. Um, they're going to Stephen Cush. Um, and I already got rid of my pop one olives, my boa constrictors, my, all my boa constrictors are leaving just because it's just, you know, I just got to be practical. Like, you know, I, I mean, what are those projects doing here if they're not always on my mind, if they're not something I'm ready to do today? You know, like I look at the boas like I'm not ready yet, you know, um, like meaning like if I had a bunch of boa babies to establish to add on top of everything else, I would kind of panic. Right. Because imagine, you know, you do want success. But what if it all goes at once? Dude, that could be that could be a problem. Cause then you're, then you can't keep up. So I'm just trying to play things smart, man. I'm really am, um, especially having a newborn. Um, he's going to be eight months actually. What's today? The 21st. So two days, he's going to be eight months. So that's crazy um, to think about, but yeah, he's grown up fast. And to think that he could be, and you know, the odds are my kid, right? He could be someone who just opens up the trap and just starts opening up cages, which, you know, <laughs> If he does, I don't want him to open up the wrong one. Like whatever he could open up, he could get hurt. But obviously, you know, that's not the. I'm, I'm gonna be on. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to make this thing as kid friendly as possible, or like kid safe, where nothing that bites you will send you to the hospital. Even though the lace monitors, Jesus Christ, I don't know. I don't know, man. I it's funny because if I was really trying to do what I'm saying, then I would get rid of the laces. But I can't. The laces are never leaving. They're 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 with me forever. They're like my child. I love Mac Dre and Alice. Um, I do have big plans for them as well. Uh, I'm not doing, I'm not well, I'm not happy with how I'm keeping Mac Dre right now because I have their cage split up. I was going to breed them. 
but it's just too small. He's not ha he's not having it. So I got to do some uh, some work on that. And I, I, I'm gonna get let you know because monitors, like I said, monitors are something that does get popular as well. But people out there need to realize how much work goes into keeping just one monitor. It's a lot of work when they're adults. Okay, it's all cute and friendly when they're babies, um, even though it's still daily. But when they're adults and they're big, <sighs> dude, you got a real fucking you got a not a, I don't want to say problem, but you have a liability on your hands, 110. percent And I'm attached to Mac Drain Alice. There's just no like I said. There's no there's you know so I got to be all over that and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm just thinking long term, trying to be smart. And I'm just, I, if I'm going to breed something, I want to breed it. I want to, I'm trying to do like, you know, like I say, be your best customer, right? If I breed something, I want first dibs on anything I breed. That's how it should be. Like you should be the one wanting everything from that, right? If possible. So that's what it's coming down to for me. Even my ball pythons, my ball pythons, I don't have a shit ton of clutches. I think I'm trying to do like 12 or 13 at the most this year, but that's all stuff I'm looking to hold back, you know, shout out to the tri triple and double recessive gang out there, but. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good thing. So, um, but yeah, listen, hour. I only wanted to go an hour, and I already kept going. So, um, I want to say thank you to everyone who uh, who tapped in. If anyone has questions, get them out there now. If, if there's anything on the top of your head, because I am gonna have a wrap up topic here, and after the wrap up topic, if there's any questions out there, I will answer them. And if there's no questions, cool, fucking bitching. I get to end it. So, um, but yeah, wrap up topic. Um. Yeah, so I will say that I just, I mean, we kind of already talked about it, right? But don't overlook your mental health because if you don't have that in check, you won't have anything in check. And even if you're that person to play it off, because that's, that's the thing with mental health. Some people are good at not showing mental health issues like, like based off their, um, their behaviors. Like they're able to harness it and just almost let it eat them alive to a certain point, right? So, dude, there's the beauty about the reptile game, like I said, is the people. You need to reach out. Reach out to somebody. If you feel alone, do not feel worried about reaching out to someone, that, especially if it's someone you talk to. And if you have these issues, dude, don't be afraid to talk about them because you're not alone, first and foremost, right? And the biggest thing with this is if you think about anyone who had – like think of the sad story of someone who had such a great name in the reptile game, right? And then they went out very sad. And what I mean by sad, either a drug addiction or like alcohol or whatever, like, like, dude, that's all mental illness. That that is all fucking mental illness. Alcoholism is mental illness. I don't give a fuck what you say. If you cannot, if you cannot go a day without drinking, like if if and if you fucking get all sweaty and shit, dude, that's an illness. That's and it's mental for sure. 110%. Um, and and again. I don't think it's talked about enough. So that's why I, I want to end tonight's, you know, one-on-one -on -one with you guys to just, and also if you see it, you know, if you see someone being quiet and you're seeing behaviors different, dude, be that person, be that friend to reach out and pick up the phone um, and just check in on your loved ones and your friends. Cause it's weird how we're coming into place a time where, man, it's like you, you see people like leaving this place um, and it's sad. So, and it doesn't, there's so much to look forward to in life. Even if your life is not enjoyable, if your life is something, like I said, if you're one of those people waking up every day miserable, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not forever. If you're able to somehow find a way to work out your differences, and when I say differences, find out what it is that makes you miserable, it's not forever, dude. You just got to make the change. And the only person who can make that change is yourself. Like no one else is going to make you change, but yourself. Like, so, and not, not, not yet do not your, not your, your loved ones. Not like they could all give you good advice, but you have to be the one to want to fucking check yourself, you know? And that could be, that could be really hard. It really, can really be hard. And it's, it takes years too. Um, and just, you know, don't be hard on yourselves, love yourselves. And again, yeah, just, just fucking check in on yourselves, man. And again, and, and it's also like, not only you check on your loved ones, but you check in on yourself too. I think checking in on yourself, um, you know, looking, you know, talk to yourself. I know it's weird, but fuck man, if it wasn't for me writing stuff down, I don't know how I would really kind of express a lot of some of the frustrations I have, you know, cause it's all about being grat. Like, you know, you gotta be thankful for so much you have and, uh, just writing stuff down has helped me a lot just for anyone out there who's looking to work on anything as far as mental health. I think writing shit down helps a lot. 
first and foremost and maybe seeing a therapist i mean i'm i'm not shy i ain't fucking scared to tell you guys like i once saw a therapist for two years hasn't seen didn't see one for almost two years and now i'm ready to go see one again and i'm cool with that because i think talking to somebody helps especially if you could talk to somebody who has no involvement with your inner life like you know like i love talking to all the reptile people and stuff but a lot of you guys know too much about me and you know a lot of you guys just say yes to me <laughs> not everyone trust me i got homies who keep it real and i love the ones who keep it real but the ones who don't know me that well sometimes just always say yes to me so um but anyways i appreciate all you guys man seriously from the bottom of my heart i love you guys even the ones who questioned me at first or whatever and came back whatever i do thank you i appreciate you guys i'm not perfect all right i'm uh but i am going to keep this about the reptiles what brought me here were the reptiles and i'm going to make sure i keep it about the reptiles all right and also again anyone out there in the reptile podcasting game good luck i appreciate you for you know just good luck all right uh who has questions anybody got a question are we good i mean am i gonna be able to fast you know dip out or let's see support us art woohoo appreciate it all right i think we're good then is it tough choice not to be honest oh, all right i think we're good man i love you guys you guys are awesome appreciate this little quick one-on-one i mean was it quick we we're out here for an hour and 20 minutes i thought it was great uh but again don't forget um let's see tomorrow thank god it's colubrids with junior jmg all right he has a, an amazing episode in store for you so set your reminder and of course saturday all monitor talk with uncle mike stefani and jen so it's gonna be an epic time appreciate all the donations to us arc from uh, the super chats you guys you guys are amazing all right and again reach out all right hit me up let me know if you guys have anything have a good night Shout out to all my sponsors from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. My trappers, my Patreon members, you guys are amazing. Appreciate you guys. Um, let's see. What's the show after Trap Fest? Uh, that's going to be the Pomona LA Fair. So Trap Fest is Thursday, and then that weekend is the LA Pet Fair that Rami's throwing, Reptile Super Show. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be cool. But anyways, have a good night, guys. Thank you so much for all the love and support. You guys are beautiful. You guys are seriously beautiful. Seriously, all of you guys, beautiful. I'll see you guys here next time, and I'm out.